If you're looking to upgrade your editing for your YouTube videos, then some of the best softwares are Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. I've actually been a Premiere Pro user for about 15 years now. And I've been using Final Cut Pro for nine years. And so today we're going head to head to find out which is the better editing software. You gotta just press record. Hey, what is up? It is Omar and Nolan with Think Media, and we're all about helping you build your influence here on YouTube. And so we talk about the best tips and tools, uh, whether that be cameras, audios, and lighting, as well as editing videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now, as we break down these two editing softwares, we're gonna look at a lot of things. We're gonna look at price, features, kind of ease of use, but there's definitely something to note in regards to the filter we are uh, saying all this information through, and that is through the lens of YouTube. You know, both softwares are incredible, you know, as a professional standpoint goes, but they're also awesome for editing YouTube videos. So let's jump into the first thing, which is price. Now, this is one of the big differences when it comes to the two programs, and it just depends on what you're going for. I prefer the way that Final Cut Pro does this, which is a $300 one-time fee. So you buy the app, and it's yours for life, which is nice, but that's not the case with Premiere Pro. So as far as Premiere Pro goes, it's more or less a subscription model. There is no one-time fee. They used to do that, but the once a month fee is $31.50. However, you could save about $11 by just paying a year up front. And so for $240 a year, which comes out to around $21 a month, uh, you can get Premiere Pro and all the upgrades that would come during that time if you were subscribed to Adobe Premiere Pro. When it comes down to it, if you want to do YouTube over the long haul and really commit to YouTube, then buying something like Final Cut Pro is the way to go versus doing a monthly plan that's just gonna end up costing a lot more money in the long run. Yeah, but I would say that as we talk through some of the features, and the bigger picture of what could be useful for you to, to justify that you know monthly cost, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to get that out of the next few sections. Now, what kind of computers can you edit with these programs on? Of course, with Final Cut Pro, this is owned by Apple. It's an Apple product, and so you can only edit on Mac products. So I have an M1 MacBook Pro, and that's what I edit Final Cut Pro on, and it runs really, really well. And I know, Omar, you have a Apple computer as well, but you use Premiere Pro. Right, so I have a M1 Mac Mini um, as well as a M1 Mac Air. Uh, I kind of went all in with the M1 setup. But Premiere Pro is actually cross-compatible in the sense that you don't need an Apple computer uh, to actually use Adobe Premiere and you can use a PC. And so that's really one edge that Premiere has on top of Final Cut is that you don't need a uh, Mac system to be able to do that. And here at Think Media, we have multiple editors and creators. And because some of us have Macs, some of us have custom built PCs, all we have to do is send over Premiere files and we can actually uh, you know, collaborate on workflows and things like that. So that's kind of like an upside when it comes to compatibility. If you're a PC user, then Final Cut's kind of out the question. But if you have a Mac, you know, they have truly optimized the editing software Final Cut to be used with a Mac. So that's just something to take into consideration that if you are PC, you probably just want to go Premiere. Now, when we talk about the ease of use, uh, growing up in high school, I was actually using Premiere Pro to edit some of the videos. And it was so overwhelming to me as a new editor because it is like a professional editing software. And um, what I ended up doing is I had an iMac at home and I, I was using iMovie and it was really, really easy to use. And I learned it and I learned everything I could do in it. I really pushed the limits of iMovie. And eventually I got Final Cut Pro 10 and it was a really Really easy step up because you kind of have everything the same you just have a bit more tools to work with and that's something unique I think about and especially since iMovie is free and you can uh, upgrade to that Final Cut Pro 10 once you're ready for that and it makes it a really easy step to learn editing whereas Premiere Pro it's like just jumping into the deep end and you just got to learn how to edit inside of this software I know that they do have some like mobile apps and stuff like that but can you touch on that Omar is that like a good way to get started or do you just recommend that people get started in Premiere Pro and they go on YouTube, they watch some tutorials, you know, we have some, we'll leave links in the description, but what do you recommend when it comes to actually learning the software? No, I think regardless of whatever program you look to choose and, and invest in, you should invest your time into learning. And so I definitely think there are some ways, you know, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm a little jaded because I've been using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro for quite some time. And so Final Cut seems hard to me because I have to learn it. 
but you know, definitely investing your time in learning uh, the software and the basics. Buy a course on the basics. You know, search YouTube for tutorials. Um, that's how I've actually gotten proficient in editing. Gen generally speaking, is simply when I run into a problem or if I think I can do something faster. I go to YouTube University, I search my question, and then I find a tutorial on it, and then usually it sticks from there. So coming up, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that we love about Final Cut and Premiere Pro, as well as some of the things that we don't really like and we wish they would improve on, but first I wanted to thank our sponsor, Epidemic Sound. When creating videos, it's definitely important to know that your video can have a vibe or a mood to it. You know, we like to put nice hip hop music at the bottom of our videos, and Epidemic makes it easy to find some good songs to help you vibe out while you're watching some of of our videos you know you completely remove those things and you remove things like sound effects and your video edit could be a little stale so that's why I love epidemic it makes it really easy to find the kind of mood and feel that you're going for with your videos dude one of the hardest things about editing when it comes to like creating a good edit is finding the right song I can spend so long trying to find the right song so one of the things that I love about epidemic is their albums and you can go in and you can find different albums that have really cool music to search from and you can go through there find the right song and then you can actually look up similar tracks and this is going to give you even more songs that match that vibe you're going for that's just one of the many things that i love about epidemic sound and if you want to get 30 days for free go to thinkmediasounds.com or check the link down in the description let's get back into the video now before we talk about what we don't like about these softwares we want to talk about what we love and uh for premiere pro as a user i definitely love the simplicity of it i do think it's simple it may not look simple but you can, it can be as simple as you want it. And like I kind of mentioned before, you can get as complex as you want as well to customize your experience when using it. So things like custom shortcuts on your keyboard or things like that, as well as assets on the internet, because Premiere's been around a little bit longer, there's such a huge wide range of assets and plugins whether that be transitions or you know moving text and things like that, which actually a lot of these things make editing easier in Premiere Pro and quicker. And so I think in that sense, it's kind of a thing I love about Premiere Pro that it's never too hard to find a plugin or something like that. But Nolan, what do you love about Final Cut Pro? Well, I hate to do this to you, but I'm gonna have to argue with you a little bit. This is a versus, and so here comes the battle. But I obviously think Final Cut Pro is better. Um, I do feel like it is faster to edit inside of Final Cut Pro, but honestly what we might need to do is make another video where we like edit the same video and it's a oh, challenge and we yeah. see who can finish the video faster and then the loser gets pied in the face. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe put it in the comments. Let us know if you want to see that and what does the what happens to the loser? Maybe the comments will decide. But honestly, I feel like I can edit so fast inside of Final Cut Pro and I just know it inside and out. And so I love that for editing YouTube videos. Which kind of does bring up what I don't love about Premiere Pro and that is that it is a steeper learning curve. I've just found a, a lot of more beginners like Final Cut uh, when people who've tried both. And uh, so that's just something that I'm not hugely a fan of when it comes to Premiere. I don't know what they can do to do that. I'm just, I'm, I'm too jaded because I'm too deep. Um, but the second thing is the render speeds and the workflow. Like mentioned earlier, Final Cut is a native software to Apple computers. And so, you know, as more advanced cameras come out in 4K, 10 bit and 8K, this and the other, you know, you're not gonna have too much of an issue scrubbing through your footage. Whereas Premiere, in my 15 years, I've always struggled with a little bit of like, <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, especially with these M1 uh, chips inside of Dude. the new computers, it is so fast to transcode media. So if you want to make proxies or if you want to export a video, like it is so fast. And I love that about Final Cut Pro. Another thing that I love about Final Cut is it's evolving. So they're adding things to it, little things, not like major changes, but they're definitely adding things to it uh, that make it better so that it's a better editing software. And yes, there are some things missing that we'll get into that I wish they had, but they are continuing to update and make it even better which I love. Now, as far as the things that I don't like, and maybe Omar, you can touch on if Premiere Pro has these things, but like one of the things that I wish Final Cut Pro had is more effects and more transitions and text effects, stuff like this. You have to get certain plugins if you wanna do some really cool stuff in Final Cut Pro. And yes, those cost money sometimes, and I don't like that you have to spend more money on a program just to get some really cool effects. For example, if you wanna do like a zoom in transition, zoom out, or certain text things like you have to get plugins and that kind of sucks. It's really easy to install and so I'll give them that and I like that, but 
I feel like there's just more cool things that you can do inside of Premiere Pro than you can do inside of Final Cut. Yeah, similar in Adobe, you can get assets and plugins and things like that. However, they do supply you with a, a kind of a library of things that you can use from the get-go that are free, that are integrated. So, But I would say maybe is limited because if you want to get more on the professional side of things, you do have to invest or get it somewhere on the internet. Right, and a good example I can think of is like LUTs for color grading. You have some inside of Premiere Pro that you can use that are really nice, whereas in Final Cut Pro, they don't give you any. Uh, you have to go and download them online, and there's a lot of free ones and good ones out there that you can buy. And then another thing would be like keyframes inside of Final Cut Pro. If you want to like do a scale effect, there's just some weird things that are happening. Again, you need to buy a plugin to fix this weird like scale issue. But overall, I love Final Cut. These cons definitely are not making me want to go and switch to Premiere Pro. Uh, I love editing and Final Cut, but those are some things to think about. Now, as far as which one you need to go with, I'm just going to be straight up and honest because I'm an honest person. I don't like to lie. <laughs> but if you're just starting out and you have an Apple uh, computer, get Final Cut. It's just going to work so much smoother with the, you know, whatever camera you have, or if you're even editing smartphone footage, it'll just be so much faster to edit and so much faster to render. Now, if you have a PC, you obviously cannot get Final Cut, but there is something to think about if you really are committing to YouTube, you know, you know, buying a M1 MacBook at around a thousand bucks and a $300 program right up front, and you never have to make that, you know, investment again, it's not a bad you know, investment being that your iPhone or your smartphone was probably the same price. And so I think that's another plus side about Final Cut. You don't have to worry about reoccurring fees. Um, I do think if you are thinking really wide and big and broad, that because Premiere Pro is cross-platform, and you have maybe multiple editors or something, you know, there's sometimes entrepreneurs that watch our videos that is getting into content creation. I know people that have editors and, and content creators for a personality, then Fi Premiere Pro is actually great for that sense. But if you're just a solo creator, man, Final Cut, in my opinion, seems to be definitely the better option to go if you're a beginner. Omar, I totally agree with you, especially in investing with a MacBook, because if you get a Mac, you get iMovie installed for free on that computer, and you can start editing right away without the initial cost of buying another editing program, and then it's gonna prep you for when it's time to invest in Final Cut. You can do that, and it's gonna be a really easy step into that software. One thing I do like about Premiere Pro that I would tell to an editor is if you wanna do YouTube and like make some really cool professional videos, and even use something like After Effects, or even get hired to work on a team. A lot of people when they're using big teams are using Premiere Pro for the reasons that you mentioned. You know, it's just so easy to send projects off to another editor, have them finish it up. And this is something that I would tell an editor if they're really wanting to learn Premiere Pro and After Effects and all of the ecosystem Photoshop that goes into that, it's actually really valuable, especially if you wanna get hired as an editor or graphic designer. And another thing that I want you guys to hear is that both of these programs are really, really good and a lot of professional editors are using both of these programs. So if you choose Final Cut Pro, don't feel bad that you don't have Premiere Pro and vice versa. Both of these are gonna get the job done and really it comes down to storytelling and how you use these programs to edit your YouTube videos. Yeah, Nolan, I agree. But you know, when it comes to editing, there are some principles you can apply regardless of what software you're using. And in this video, you're gonna learn some of those principles. So if you're editing on your smartphone or if you're using another software, you can level up your videos. So click or tap the screen and we'll see you in another video. Another video.